Hello, everybody. Welcome to Therapy Dog Talk. My name is Sherry. My pup's name is Sunny, and we are training to be an animal assisted counseling team. Each week, we talk with different teams around the world to learn about the impact that they're making in their areas. And if you're just getting started and you're not sure where to get started, we have a free guide for you that you can find at freeguide.therapydogtalk.com. And we also have a community you can join at community.therapydogtalk.com. Today we're going to be talking with Leslie about her experiences training her senior rescue buddy. I think it'll be really great for everyone. Hooray! <laughs> great. Okay. Glad it's working. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> this is Buddy. Come here. I just got a big <laughs> head nudge from him. He's like, give me more attention, Mom. <laughs> right. I figured I'd sit down here on the floor because he's an old guy and he wasn't going to stand for long. So we're here on the floor playing. That is perfectly okay. We have had many people on the floor. In fact, I actually used to host this from the floor in front of my couch, which people didn't realize, but then Sunny would be behind me that I way. I saw that, and you'd feed her a treat. Yeah. I thought that was the best thing ever. <laughs> yeah, and I do the same thing now. She's actually right next to me. You just can't see her. That's Very awesome. Good. Well, Leslie, for those who don't know you, would you like to introduce yourself and Buddy? Yeah, definitely. So my name's Leslie. We live in Reno, Nevada, and this is Buddy. He was rescued from the shelter about 10 months ago and he's camera shy. He's always camera shy. Hi, sweetie. So yeah, he was dropped off at the shelter by his family. So his elderly owners couldn't care for him anymore and they had gone into a facility. And so, you know, their family must not have been able to take him. So they brought him to the shelter and you can tell he was really loved. They brought his bed with him. And so we were able to take that. But he sat at the shelter for about two and a half, three months. Black dogs always get adopted, you know, last and he also has he needs thyroid medicine and so you know any type of medical condition people may not want to adopt them plus he's a senior he's probably 10 and a half going on 11 now we were looking for a dog and so we kept seeing him but we weren't quite sure he was for us and I'm just like what is it with that guy and at the time he was called tubby because he was 80 pounds he was way overweight so the shelter gave him the lovely name of tubby and so we were just like oh, poor tubby I mean for real and and then finally one day it was just like, yeah, we need just to go get him. And so that's how we got him. Oh, I love that. And Buddy's not your first therapy dog, correct? No, nope, he's not. He's my third. You would think I was a pro, but I'm totally not. I bet you know more than you think you do. I literally only have like 20 therapy visits under my belt. I haven't done a whole lot, but yes, we've cycled through three dogs. Well, you've so rescued I, senior dogs, right? Well, that the last two have been, yeah. yeah. Their energy level fits our lifestyle. I have lupus. And while in the past, my health has been worse, right now it's kind of better, but it still is quite a challenge when it comes to energy level and whatnot. And then my mother-in-law lives with us now, and so she's like 70, 71. So having an elderly person live with you, we had to take into account certain energy levels as well. And so senior dogs seem to fit the bill. We joke that our house is the senior center because a lot of the times I feel like a 60 or 70 year old. I really do. My low energy, I'm on the couch resting, you know, during the day. My mother-in-law's got her walker. We've got these senior dogs. So that's just our energy level. But our first dog was Teddy. I've got my little fan cards. This is Aww. Teddy. We had him first uh, when our kids were littler and we got him at a year and a half and he was just our family dog. He had his bad traits, right? He was actually leash reactive, couldn't get along with big dogs, but he was really social. In our church, we're always having people come over and visit and whatnot. Anytime someone would come over and visit with me, you know, they're sitting on the couch, I'm sitting on the couch, but he would be with them. And so he just loved people. And I can't remember when I thought about therapy work. Work. I really don't, but I'm sure I thought it was really neat. I've always loved helping people and serving people. I was never really a dog person. I liked my dog, but then I don't know, something transpired that I kind of thought, I wonder if he could do this work. I have a friend local that uh, did therapy work and she's a real animal person and could evaluate. And it was her encouragement 
that got me going. I honestly don't know if I ever could have just done it on my own. She came over and evaluated Teddy and she's like, oh yeah, he's totally fine. I'm like, yeah, but he does this, he does that, you know, he barks, you know, he wasn't very good on the leash. The kids would do all the dog walking. And so he did not have good leash skills. And she's like, but you can work on those things. He would be fine. So I did work on those things with him and we were able to pass and he did therapy work. I think we did maybe, you know, was it 12, 10 to 12? visits with him. COVID, of course, you know, cut that number. But I really didn't think we could do it because he didn't like big dogs. And what she told me is therapy work is dog to people. We just had to do visits where we were the only team. And that was totally fine. You know, I missed out on some of the group things, but we just did stuff on our own. And so we went to the Child Advocacy Center and I found that he didn't really like that. He didn't like to just sit for like an hour. The 911 center was too much for him because he loved food. And the 911 center always has lots of treats and food. The college was fun. And then visiting the elderly is what he liked most because we could visit and move on. So yeah, that was our first one. That's great. And then who is your next therapy dog? So our next therapy dog was Lucky. And you know, I don't know if a lot of people have the same dream, but it was just a dream to own a golden retriever. And I swore I would never, ever be able to own a golden retriever. But after Teddy died, we just were looking and someone needed to rehome him. His story is that he was with a family when he was a puppy. I imagine during those teenage years, they got a little, you know, dogs during the teenage years can make you go, ah, well, he was put outside and he was pretty much neglected and not treated well at all for about seven years of his life. Another family was able to rescue him from that situation, but then they needed to rehome him because they were in a rental and they weren't supposed to have a dog. You know, he was overweight as well. We've been the weight loss center as well. So Lucky was 100 pounds. We got him down to 90, but he was covered in sores. He stunk of urine. He had not been really socialized or trained, but that golden retriever nature was that he was the sweetest dog in the world. And so he was 11. And unfortunately, I only had him for eight months when he had a medical condition and we had to put him down, which broke my heart. He was my therapist. He was mine. So it was it was very hard. And so when we went to the shelter, we were looking for another dog and my mother-in-law wanted Buddy here. I was just like, sure, get him. It was hard to bond with Buddy, but now it's just, he's just the sweetest old man. He really is. So poor Lucky, I got his fan cards and he was certified and three weeks later he passed away. So he never was able to go on a visit, but the people that met him during training, I mean, this, the connections were there. He loved people. So yeah, he was really, really special, but he was never able to have an actual official therapy dog visit, but he made the biggest impact on me personally. And then as we started bonding with Buddy, I quickly realized his things. He loves to sleep, eat, and be pet. He does not play (laughs) with toys. He does not even like to go outside. He is a border collie mix and does not like to go outside. Hmm. So it was all about people. And we started taking him to stores. It was like, oh, I can meet that person. And I can meet that person. And I can meet that person. And I'm like, okay, I have a therapy dog again. So it was really special. Were you looking for another therapy dog when you were looking for Buddy? Yeah. Well, at the time I was not ready to have a dog, but I knew when I was looking for a dog, I'm going to look for a therapy dog. My mother-in-law grew up with dogs and she had lost her dog while she was here. And so she wanted the dog. And so that's why I was like, sure, you can pick Buddy. He's your dog. She feeds him. He sleeps with her. And I'm sure that helps the bonding go a little bit slower. But yeah, I just realized he's totally a therapy dog. Oh my gosh, this is here. So now my heart needs to get ready to do it. And you have to wait six months anyway, because, you you know, he's a new dog for us. And so finally, around that six month mark, it was like, all right, yeah, we can be a team. And this is really working. And I'll say I am currently looking for another therapy dog because poor Buddy is almost 11 years old. Yeah. Adopting seniors is what we need right now, but it means things are short lived. So yeah, I'm already stressing out about, you know, how do I find that next therapy dog? Yeah. Do you know what it is you'll be looking for when you look for them? 
Well, I have to tell you, I've tried a few. We tried a two-year-old pit bull. Sweetest thing in the world. Too much energy for me. So I learned, okay, not that. We tried a two-year-old Rhodesian Ridgeback Great Dane mix. Okay, too powerful. That was a foster. I'm not saying we adopt these dogs and give them back. That was a foster. And then most recently, we tried a one-year-old Corgi. Way too much energy. So I'm like, okay, I'm learning what isn't working. We need low energy dogs that are super, super friendly. So yeah, it's hard because I keep looking, get discouraged because of what's at the shelter. A lot of high energy dogs are at the shelters. And so that doesn't work and all the little dogs get picked first. And so I'm pretty discouraged right now, but I'm trying to tell myself, well, it's just not the right time then. So yeah, choosing a dog that you want to do therapy work with from the shelter can be a long process and it can be frustrating. Yeah, I remember talking with Erica about that a little over a year ago, probably at this point, and she was mentioning working with fosters to really find out more about the dog's personality and everything like that in order to find a good fit for therapy work as a rescue. But it sounds like you are fostering, and so that could be a good way too. Yeah, we did that. The Corgi, it was a situation where they needed to rehome their dog and they hadn't taken him to the shelter yet. And I just had to be honest and say, I really want to try this, but if it doesn't work, you know, I'll need to call you back because it does have to work with lupus and chronic illnesses. If I'm stressed, I get sick. And Mm -hmm. so while I don't recommend everybody just go and try out dogs, that's what I have to do. I can't have a dog that's going to cause a lot of stress because then I can't do anything. And so the little corgi, we had about six hours and I knew, okay, this is just too much. I made the wrong pick. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that was that situation. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that corgis are actually bred for herding. Yeah, (laughs) and they are medium to high energy. And it was a puppy. I just, okay, Leslie, I've learned you cannot have puppies. (laughs) Because, of course, with the frustration of trying to find a dog in the shelter, I've been going, well, then I'll just go to a breeder and get a puppy and just do that. For me, I can't do that. And I've learned, finally. (laughs) But some of the characteristics of shelter dogs, there's two things that I learned that I thought, Uh, okay, when I go look, these are the questions I need to ask. And one of them was, it's the dog that is the staff favorite. And so if you can talk to the staff and figure out who the staff favorite is, that's probably going to be your social dog. And then the other one is the dog that was used for testing other dogs there for temperament. And that's what Buddy was. Buddy was one of their testing dogs. He was listed as a green dog. And, you know, sure enough, like he is so neutral towards dogs, unless they're little dogs that are barking in his face, he'll start to growl at them. He does not like the little yappy dogs. So yeah, he was a green dog and he was used for dog testing in the shelter. And so those two things were like light bulbs for me to go, all right, I'll ask those questions and see who they recommend. So that was a big thing I learned this last time. Yeah, those are really useful. I haven't heard those tips before. Yeah. And then, of course, when I meet the dog, you have to touch them all over. You kind of pull on their tail a little bit, pull on their ears, and that's another big thing. They need just to be able to be touched all over. And if they can do that in the shelter, that's a sign that maybe this dog could do therapy work. Yeah. So you've started volunteering with Buddy, yeah? Yes, we have done four visits, I believe, two reading times at the library, one visit to the veterans home here, you know, that's kind of assisted living, but it's for the veterans and they live there. And then the other one was, my husband actually works for the blood bank here and one of his staff members loves dogs and he got therapy dogs to go on all the blood drives. And so I finally signed up for one. I'm like, I got to attend my husband's blood drives, right? So we did a blood (laughs) drive and that was fun. In our local area here in Reno, we have a pretty large therapy dog group. Uh, They're called Paws for Love. And if you want to do anything in town, you got to be part of their group because they have set up with the 911 center, with the court, with the schools, with the library. I know there's a few others, but depending on what I wanted to do, I just found, oh, Paws for Love does that for us. Oh, okay. So I joined the local group and it's a good support system. 
Yeah. And then it's a lot less work for a volunteer to just be part of their group and then you go on the assignment. Yeah, okay. works really well. Are you certified through them or are you certified through a different organization? So Pause for Love locally is just the local group. They don't okay. do any certification. We're with Alliance of Therapy Dogs and a lot of the people in that group are evaluators for ATD. And that was something in the beginning that was a little confusing. I was trying to figure out where do I even start? And so they were able to help me navigate the beginning stuff. Yeah. That's awesome. Of those three different environments, which one did Buddy seem to enjoy the best? Did he have like a favorite? I think he did really enjoy visiting the veterans. I heard some other people say that their dogs may not like to sit in one place for like a whole hour. Mm -hmm. And the first reading time, I was like, oh, he's doing great. He loves it. And he did. And then we did the veterans home and he did enjoy going through and meeting people. And then the second reading time that we did, it went a little long. It was an hour and 15 minutes. And, you know, I need to kind of stick to our timetable because at 50 minutes, he's ready to go home. So at an hour and 15 minutes at that reading time, he was darting for the door. And I'm like, you know, I need to make sure he leaves when he's ready. Yeah. And then I recalled, I saw him kind of drooling at the end. Mm -hmm. And he's not a drooler. And so I was like, oh, that was a sign. And I should have picked up on that. He was interacting with a little boy and I was seeing slobber. And I was like, oh, he's usually not a slobber. So he was ready to go. Yeah. So I think he likes moving around. He liked the blood drive too, but there weren't as many people. Yeah. And personally, I like to visit the facilities. I've dealt with a lot of medical stuff myself, and I know how bad it can be to be stuck in a place, feeling horrible, aching. You just want to get back to your normal life. And so I just really feel for that situation. And so personally, I like to do that. I found that memory care wasn't really for us. I get nervous because memory care can be unpredictable. They can grab, they can shout. And we did have a negative experience with Teddy in a memory care facility. Okay. And so I won't do memory care and that's fine. Other people can do that. And actually, I just got a call today. Well, yesterday, a family wanted a dog to visit their loved one. I was like, yeah, sure, we can do that. So I contacted the facility. Oh, that person's in memory care. And so I went, okay, and I'm a people pleaser. So it's like, well, what is she like? You know, what's her behavior like? Well, but then I stopped and thought and I went, no, I need to stick to what I know is best for us. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I can't do memory care. And so I'm learning that you really do have to set your boundaries with you and your dog and do what is best. Yeah, and it's better for them as well, because if they find a team who's more comfortable with memory care, that's going to be a better experience for them. Yeah, for sure. And she told me we do have dogs in the facility. And so I was like, okay, good. I'm not the only one <laughs> so somebody else that's better at it can do that. Yeah. yeah, that's great. I love that you acknowledge what's a good fit for you and what's a good fit for your dog yeah. and, and advocating for both of you. Yeah, and he might be fine with it, but I get nervous and I know that's not going to help anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Leslie, do you have any advice for anyone who's interested in getting into volunteering with their dog? That it's not a big to do process. So many people online on Facebook or something, they're like, oh, I wanted to get into therapy work. And they think they have to take all these training classes and spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars, you know, to do all this stuff. And I'm chiming in there going, you can do it all yourself. The fee is 25 bucks or something, right, to register with the organization. And so while the dogs definitely need to have good behavior and be trained dogs, you can do a lot of it yourself. And I found a YouTube training channel that I really, really love a lot and I've learned a lot of things from them. So doing a lot of it on your own, personally, I've grown as a person and I feel like I've even become a better mom because when you train your dogs, you learn unconditional love because they give you that love no matter what. And so I just found that I learned kind of how to interact with people better by training my therapy dogs. And so to me, it's a transformative thing if you get into therapy work and it doesn't need to be stressful. 
you can do it yourself and it doesn't have to be expensive. So for people who kind of think, oh, I can't do that because that's one thing that I've learned. Yeah. What was the YouTube channel that you found to be helpful? It's Dogs That, Dogs with an S, and it's Susan Garrett. And she does all positive reinforcement, but also just her philosophies in life in general, you know, are very positive and giving. I made so many correlations between her training philosophy and how to parent, right? You give the dogs choices and when they choose right, then they get their reward and everybody's happy. You know, you don't have to hit your dog. You don't have to go, you're bad, go in time out. It's like, no, 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 no. So yeah, Susan Garrett, Dogs That on YouTube. Fantastic. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Is there anything else that you wanted to share while you're here, Leslie? I think we hit on everything. You know, like I was talking about as far as it being transformative for me, as my kids are all older, my youngest is 19 and everybody's moving away and they're living their own lives, but nobody needs mom anymore. I was really trying to find something. So, you know, if you're looking for something, therapy work is just amazing. Service feeds your heart as well as other people. And when I realized that having a dog and doing therapy work hit about 10 different positives for me, I went, wow, I have to exercise because I have to walk the dog. I'm learning something new. I'm setting goals. I'm getting out of the house. I'm doing something fulfilling. I'm helping other people. You know, I'm rescuing a dog. I could not believe how much it filled for me in all the areas of my life. Being a better mother, learning how to you know, interact more positively with people. It's just amazing. So if I can just leave people with that, we all know it's good service and we make other people feel good, but it makes us feel good too, for sure. I love that. And if people want to follow your journey, they can find you at Leslie's L-E-S-L-E-E-S underscore therapy dogs, right? Yeah, it used to be called Theodorable for Teddy, but once I realized, okay, we're going to have more than one dog here, then I changed it to Leslie's Therapy Dogs, and hopefully we'll have the next one and just continue on the journey because I need this and the dogs are just wonderful. Well, you're making such an impact not only on yourself, but on dogs and on those that you interact with too. So thank you for doing so. Yeah. Well, thanks for having us. I thought it was pretty special to be invited. And I'm amazed at all of the stories that you gather and everything that you're doing and providing the Hey, How to Get Started program. And it's amazing what you're doing. I love it. Thank you. I enjoy it. All right. Well, take care, Leslie. It was really nice to meet you and get to know more about your story. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye, everybody.